that's what I love about uh, the Jackass energy. I'm curious. I, I was so curious. I, I don't. I don't want to know the answer. I think, but like, I, I, I was so curious if like, when, uh, when you guys first started doing it, if there were like teams, like the the Philadelphia team and yeah. the watch call it team. There was absolutely, and there was a little bit of because I remember like. There, it seemed like now when I watched the first one, you could see a little tension between certain people. Like when, uh, when I'm so bad at names and I, and I love these guys so much, but um, uh, Danger Aaron, Danger Aaron yeah. and, and Bam almost got in a fist fight one time. Yep. And they had to break it up. And they're they like, did get into a fist fight on yeah. the third movie. Yeah? Yeah. And so did? maybe that's the one yeah. I saw. And so, and so I was like. I think that was the same day Bam broke my nose, too. <clears throat> really? And so I wonder, like, I was wondering, do they have, were there squads? And then I was like, I wonder if the, if there were squads when everyone came in the, for the new guys, if there, if it was a weirdness or if it was like, no. you guys have been there so long, you're like, this is the deal. The weirdness was when uh, Knoxville and Tremaine announced to the the OG cast that they wanted to bring in new blood. There was younger people and like, really? you know, like none of us were, were stoked on that idea. We yeah. Like, I can Wait, imagine, what? I can imagine you wouldn't be. And as it played out, like we, we, we resisted it. We, yeah. we, we, we pushed back and they just weren't having it. They, they said, no, this is how it's going to be. So that's how it was. And, uh, day one on the set with the new guys, like, they just were so stoked to be there. They were just like the, you know, like we just fell in, we fell in love with them right away. So, yeah. so it all, it all kind of dissipated. It was fine. Now, speaking of the new guys, and and this is something that was uh, pretty crazy. You mentioned I had Poopies on my podcast. I did Poopies podcast. Poopies is a real. Why you did a, Poopies podcast? You know, you, you, I listened to you talk about Poopies, and I I, do, I, I knew Poopies from. Um, uh, Jamie, Jamie O'Brien. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, so I was a fan. I'm a fan. I am a fan of Jamie O'Brien's. And Poopies would be on his podcast. I knew Poopies. I knew part of Poopies. And then I saw him on Jackass, and I felt like I got to know more of him. Then I saw him on your... You Maybe you were on his podcast. And no, 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 I just did his, and it's not out yet. So, so okay, you're so saying you, you I, saw, yeah, I saw him, him on, your, on yours, and I was like, I was like, oh, Poopies is an interesting person. And then when I did Poopies' podcast... I could not stop fucking laughing. He is a real. He is an authentic. I told. I told him he should get a, a MacArthur grant. You know they give MacArthur grants to like, like a lot of people. A lot of professional clowns will get a MacArthur grant. Right, right, so right. There's not a lot of money in being a clown, but if you're a really good clown, like the guy from Sesame Street was a Bill really, Irwin, yeah, best Bill, clown ever. I'm so yeah. glad you know that. Yeah, yeah, best clown. He had. A, I think he had a MacArthur grant. I'm not. If I'm not. It's actually a Cirque du Soleil clown who's better than Bill Irwin. But what's a MacArthur grant? Yeah, they give you like hundred fifty dollars a year. To just keep pursuing what you want to pursue, one hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, one hundred fifty thousand oh, dollars. And they just just go, hey, right. just keep doing you. You're so special. We don't well, want to break cool. you. We don't want to break. We don't want the world to break you because what we think is your art form maybe isn't. Um, it's underappreciated. It's underappreciated. So we want to make sure that you can continue thriving and making and doing you. And so and poopies is a hundred percent that human being. Right. When I started my podcast with Poopies, like uh, like one of the first thing that just falls out of my fucking mouth, I'm like, so you're really dumb. <laughs> it's like the first thing I said. And and, and there was a lot of uh, kind of criticism in the comments and stuff. People were like, man, that really rubbed me the wrong way, Steve. You know, like, fuck you, Steve, up for saying that. Yeah. And, and I, I, I deserved that criticism. Yeah. I deserved that backlash. I, I, it was just a, it, it was a, a thoughtless and a shitty way to start the conversation with he's Poopies. A, he's not dumb. He's just, Poopies does the I mean, world. He's like, the, I mean, I mean this respectfully. He's like Theo Vaughn. Theo Vaughn it, is, it, is, 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 sees the world in his own unique way. And there are people, I know Theo very well, and I, we work together on a number of shows. There are people that write off Theo to maybe not being... Uh, not being in the not maybe not now, but back then they would write off the for not being in the moment or not listening or not paying attention. But man, when he spoke, it made the people listening laugh hysterically. Theo's so quick, so he's, he's quick, but he's but man, you know, Theo says things. I'm, I'm saying this real. I think a lot of people think you know, Theo spends a lot of time writing. Sometimes he just says things for sure that are just that come out 
hysterical. Mm-hmm. Where you, and it's the way his brain actually operates. You can't change that. You can't right. buy that. His he's he's just being an authentic artist, like an authentic Absolutely. artist. Absolutely. And, and, and Poop, Poopy has that authenticity of like he was talking about. He was telling me a story about about setting off bottle rockets in his ass, and he goes, "Do you want to know how I came up with that idea?" And I couldn't stop laughing because I was like, I think I got it, but <laughs> like I think I, I, I'm pretty sure I can ballpark it. But sure, <laughs> tell me how you came up with that idea, of poops. But he's, I had so much fun with him. Yeah, I, I love that guy, man. I, I love, love I love guy. him too. And and, and I, I shouldn't even try to defend myself for just coming out of the gate saying, "So you're dumb." But he's dumb. <laughs> I don't think. He's I don't think he's. Like that's I think, his, it's I think his lovability. You know, like he's he's so lovably innocent and naive. He's, and he's like, very. You know, there is like, a, there is a naivete to him. I, I'm saying that. I'm, I'm saying that he, he said, is he's, dumb, and I'm I'm saying that as not an insult, if that's possible. Yeah. Well, I think I think I I can get written in that in that in that same stroke of the brush where everyone goes. Um, Bert's not a very introspective person. He's not a very thoughtful person in, in like his actions or his behaviors or his words i say fucked up shit and i don't think things through but like but like yeah poopy's uh he i mean he said something that my assistant is 25 and uh we were having dinner that night and we're having a drink and he starts giggling i go what and he goes i said to poopy's in the thing i said how old were you how do you remember beer runs and he goes yeah fuck yeah i remember beer runs he goes as a matter of fact I might, I might say I, I, I quit doing them a little too late in life. And we're like, how old were you, were you for your latest beer run? He goes, 27. And we're like, 27? <laughs> my, my assistant's at dinner and he starts giggling. I go, what? And he goes, I'm 25. Like, I would never do a beer run. Poopy's is doing de- beer, beer runs two years after this day for me. Yeah, I how, just how old is Poopy's? Uh, he's 33, 34. Yeah, yeah. I, I was having a conversation with Steve on the bus. Yeah. Poopy's was sitting over there. And I was like, hey, yo, dude. And Poopies wasn't even looking. And I was talking to Steve. And he thought that I was talking to him. So every question that I asked Steve, you just hear Poopies going, yeah, kind of. <laughs> He's like, oh, no way. <laughs> oh, I fucking love this guy. Oh, no way. There's, you can't create him. And you can't try to be him. Right. Like, you can't try sure. to be him. And I'm you like, just are him. I'm like, yeah. Poopies, I'm talking to Steve. He's like, oh, hell yeah. And then I keep talking. <laughs> like, dude, I changed my number. I, I I hit him up like two days ago and, and he didn't know like who who I who it was and I was like hey poops are you available to film on the 26th in San Diego he's like oh hell yeah dude who is this <laughs> dude it's an that's an authentic person yeah, yeah. there's no bullshit and there's no pre thought outness of it yeah. you know yeah. which is so original in this business is someone who's not pre thinking out like right. I remember I remember uh uh. Whitney Cummings tell, told me a story. I won't say names, but it was another comic. Whitney told, Cummings got her uh, tit leaked. Like some some guy had a picture of her tit that she had accidentally exposed on Instagram, and she there was more stuff, and she was afraid he was going to leak it to the internet. So she got in front of it and she posted the picture of her tit. She goes, "Listen, someone's threatening that he's going to post this. I'm not going to let him do that. I have the own power. This is my tit. I posted it on Instagram." And then that day I posted Well, all right. She posted a tit on Instagram? No, no she did it on Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. Twitter. And um and so I then t- posted a picture of my balls where I had kind of ruptured a testicle and and I and at no point did I see that as like and a comic called her and he's like, "I was fucking brilliant. Is it real?" And she was like, "Is it real?" And he was like, yeah, like, what are you trying to sell? And she was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And she told me about that, and I went, <clears throat> that's crazy. Like, so many people wondered, like, was Joe Coy and Chelsea Handler, like, a real relationship, or are they trying to sell tickets? There's Because that's so much of this business. Now, obviously, it was it was a real relationship. It lasted for a year. But, but like, so many people's brains work that way, and Poopies does not. Mm-hmm. And it's so refreshing in this fucking business of, like, where even me and you can get caught up in the thought... Oh, if you think, sure. because you can work, you can find some workarounds for things. Yeah, you know, like fucking, you know, I, I remember going in for surgery for my elbow, and I had to sell tickets at Red Rocks, and I went, well, I'm gonna make this work for me, and I fucking filmed my promo going into surgery, going under, and like there are some guys that, and, and it, a lot of us that will try to think things through. That is not boopies, by the way. That is such a fucking hilarious 
poopy story that he, you're having a conversation with Steve and he's in the front going, yeah. He's like, oh, hell yeah, dude. He's like, sick. No way. Like, he had like four things that like he would just say. Oh, what a fucking great yeah, dude. Dude, blocks off an entire day to shoot and then says, Oh, dude, I got a new number. Who's this? <laughs> dude. <laughs> or no, you were, you got the number. You know, you know, that was a whole other story, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that's a... Uh... Dude, it's, it's crazy. It's called Steve-O's Hot Sauce for Your Butthole. And if you go on Amazon and type in Steve-O's Hot Sauce for Your Butthole and order yourself a bottle, you'd be really helping me. Because right now we're ranked number 30 on all of Amazon. And if you buy a bottle, we might go up the ladder. And that would mean a lot. So please get on Amazon and buy Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude.